with Raw going off the air last week with its biggest audience in over a year, a big tag match of Austin and Michaels against the Road Warriors for the tag belts was already booked, and Undertaker opened the show for the follow-up angle. Taker established the idea that he was blackmailed into joining Paul Bearer and is being held hostage, with the only reason he didn't attack Bearer last week was to protect his family. Bearer came out saying that Taker is gonna do what he tells him to, whatever he likes it or not. Bringing out Seed who returned from back injury, challenging Taker for his WrestleMania 13 rematch with the match booked in the main event. Farouk came out to hype his title match with Taker in six days, promoted entirely on Farouk wanting to become the first black world champion in company history. WCW opened fast with Scott Hall and Six already in the ring, Hall called out Flair who still wasn't in the building, instead bringing out JJ Dillon who said that he just talked with Flair on his jet, who is going to be there in around 35 minutes. Dillon said that Flair is also gonna wrestle tonight, with Hall saying that it's gonna be Six vs Flair. Instead Dillon booked Scott Hall vs Flair for tonight or he's tripping Hall and Nash from the tag belts. Hall agreed saying that he's going to take out Flair before their match at Slamboree. The first time ever Hall vs Flair match, promoted throughout the show as a strong contender for the biggest match in the history of Nitro, was perhaps the company's response to losing the last quarter hour last week for the first time in the last year, with a loaded final quarter planned by WCW this week. The Hard Foundation came out for a promo, with Hard officially revealing that the originally booked match with Michaels was off six days before the King of the Ring pay-per-view, giving the reason of Austin's attack last week doing more damage to his knee, and that both Austin and Michaels are trying to take him out before he heals as they know they can't beat him. Austin and Michaels showed up in a split screen from different rooms in the building, arguing again with Sean blaming Austin for taking out Brett before his match with him. Austin said that he doesn't care about both of them with Michaels leaving his room to find Austin in the other side of the arena, leading to another confrontation between them in a series of great segments over the past month, with the interesting dynamic between Sean and Austin continuing to be one of the highlights as both are trying to one-up the other in every exchange. The original plan for King of the Ring was Brett vs Sean and Austin vs Pillman, with Brett telling Pillman to suggest Austin wrestles Sean instead. Both agreed to the match with Austin saying that after he wrestles Sean, he's going to take out Pillman the next night on Raw. With the Brett and Sean heat escalating to new heights over the past month, Michaels reportedly asked McMahon to match Brett's salary on his newly signed contract, or he wants out of his deal to go to WCW, knowing that there's a guaranteed top spot politically with the Wolfpack and former clique buddies, at the top of the political hierarchy in the company. In another fuel to the rumors, Michaels was filmed wearing an NWO Outsiders t-shirt in a photo on a Napolitano magazine. With Sean having years left on his contract, there was no way Vince would have let him out of the deal in the most competitive environment in business history. The one way out was that allegedly, Michaels had a favored nation clause in his contract signed last year, meaning the company are contractually obligated to match any amount of money any other performer makes more than him. If that was the case, Michaels could claim breach of contract and potentially get out of it. WCW jumped big for the Steiner Brothers tag match against Chano and Muta along with Flair arriving for a promo gaining over 1.3 million viewers in less than 30 minutes to a 3.5 rating. Harlem Heat ended up costing Scott and Rick the match wanting their shot for the tag belts. Flair hyped the Big Hall main event in a match that would be outside his short match with Six two weeks ago, Flair's first TV match back on WCW's regular time slot, since his rotator cuff injury in September 1996.
Raw peaked with a 2.9 rating for the Michaels Austin vs. Road Warriors tag, along with the third part of Mick Foley's interview with JR. Austin and Michaels went 10 minutes with LOD ending up in a countdown after Michaels went out to confront the hard foundation, Austin went after him as they started brawling again in the final build to their pay-per-view match Sunday. Mick Foley continued his standout career performance in the JR interview, this time recapping his hardcore days, saying that the first time he entered the ring surrounded by barbed wires was the first time he felt at home showing footage from his violent matches in Japan and ECW. WCW was building to another sports-based match with Mongo cutting a promo on Green. Dylan booked Harlem Heat in a match in the continuation of their segment earlier, ending up with Rick and Scott costing them the match back. Raw had Foley's first match since his series of interviews began, working against Savio Vega with Jerry Lawler on commentary building up their King of the Ring semi-final, set to be Lawler vs. Mankind, and Triple H vs. Ahmed Johnson. After asking for Sullivan for weeks, Jimmy Hart put a series of obstacles for Benoit before getting to him. Benoit wrestled Barbarian in a strong match with some big spots ending up with Benoit going over. The hyped WCW main event matched the hype in several aspects as Ric Flair and Scott Hall put on a good show in a tease for the upcoming Bash pay-per-view, going 8 minutes over 2 quarters ending up with Hall hitting Flair with the belt. With Nash and Hogan off the show, Hall and Six attacked Flair post-match until Mango made the save. Raw had a taker and seed in the Mania 13 rematch, with taker going over clean with the tombstone. Post-match saw Farouk and The Nation laying out both Seed and Taker to close the show. After the night Romain event ended, with the announcers recapping the night ready to go off the air, Randy Savage showed up dragging Mean Gene to the ring for an unscheduled interview, telling him that he has something to say to the audience and Paige in the ring. Savage threatened Gene to go the ring or he will knock him out, saying that the Macho Man is the greatest of all time and he's gonna crush Paige at Great American Bash bringing out J.J. Dillon to calm Savage down before attacking Gene. Dillon said that he once had big respect for Savage referring to their WWF days, that then if he wanted to confront someone like Paige he would do it face to face, Savage came back saying that he's sorry to burst his bubble, and that he is here in the ring and Paige is not in the building. Dillon said that he's not the same Savage he once knew as he's hiding in the crowd and behind Liz, setting Savage off as he attacked Dillon with Eric Bischoff and security running to the ring to hold Savage off in one of the best segments of the year. Eric took the microphone telling Dillon that he paid the price for provoking the madness and the same is gonna happen to Paige. WCW's final quarter with the Scott Hall vs Ric Flair match along with the Randy Savage angle ended up drawing a peak 4.7 rating, gaining huge with over 1.7 million viewers to become the most watched quarter in Monday Night Wars history.